with at Barwon, uh, which was down at um, the Heighton Reserve, which is now the uh, Geelong Falcons ground, when I was 11. And a friend of mine that I just started school with, started high school that year at Belmont High School. Um, a friend of mine, Graham Butcher, who also played some games here at Geelong West, he said to me, come on, I'm going down to try out for the uh, the Barwon under 15, so why don't you come with me? We went down there and uh, I played a couple of years there and then was lucky enough to be picked in some representative team, Victorian uh, schoolboy team in 1964. And then uh, from there I went to play at uh, Geelong under 19s for a couple of years. Uh, broke my leg in my first um, open age game at Geelong in the middle of the MCG in my uh, year 12 year at school, which probably helped me with my year 12 because I could do nothing for the whole year but study. Uh, then we decided to move and go to Bendigo and I went and played for three years with Bendigo, uh, in Bendigo with uh, Golden Square. We just missed finals in each of those three years. And in that uh, three years, I was at uni, I just started university and I used to come home and train here with Geelong West because I couldn't get up to Bendigo to train. So I used to train here and um, people would say, well, you know, why don't you come and play here? So after three years of travelling to Bendigo and beyond every Saturday and then back home Saturday night, my dad used to drive me up, um, uh, I decided to come to Geelong West. So started with Geelong West in 1971 under Ian Bryant, who had just uh, come down as coach from Footscray, been playing um, in the VFL at Footscray. We were in first division. Uh, we weren't very strong that year. We got relegated. The next year, um, in second division, um, the, the recruit of the year was Bill Goggin, who had just finished playing some 250 games at, at Geelong, and um, came over here as coach, and it just completely revitalised this club, having Billy here. Um, I think it's no secret that anybody who played under Bill Goggin um, loved him. Um, hard man, very hard. And I can remember him saying to me a few times, you know, if you ever put in a bad one, you're gone because you're not doing the right thing. He was talking more about my off-field, um, the things I used to do off the field at the time. Um, and. Changed, it changed, certainly changed my approach to footy. Um, I, I'll never forget, we played a practice game here one night and Billy's great mate, Polly Farmer, came over and, and you know, we were just in awe of those guys at that time. And I was 21 year old and um, those, those two had played in premierships and, you know, probably two of the greatest players to play, certainly for Geelong. Um, so yes, and then 72, we, we, as I say, we were revitalised, um, got a few new players, um, won the, the, not only the Premiership, we were, obviously we were champions that year, that's history now. Um, we had some close encounters in that year, but we managed to scrape through. Um, played Caulfield, I think, four times that year. Each time we beat them by a goal or less including the grand final and I'll never forget um, Alex Angelkovic kicking a goal in the second semi-final. I think it might have been after the siren or if it wasn't it was right on the siren and Alex Angelkovic was the second worst kick ever known to football. There was one who was worse but I just can't think who it would be. Um, and it, it was a helicopter punt um, missed the outstretched fingers on the goal line by about a centimetre and uh, it kept us undefeated, put us into the grand final and we, we, uh, we went on to win. Uh, from there, th after that year, I was, um, we played the, the next year in first division and I played here. Um, we just missed the finals 
Uh, I remember halfway through the year getting a, a phone call from Bob Davis saying we want you to play for Geelong next week. Um, come over. And I thought, well, look, I, I don't really want to leave. You know, we had a good team. We were good mates. And, I, and one of the things about the time that, that I played here at Geelong West, and in any team for that matter, good teams are always made up of good mates. Um, we were good mates. I didn't want to walk out on my mates in the middle of the season. So I said to Bob Davis, look, if you still feel the same at the end of the season, um, I'll come over. Uh, we missed the finals that year, just. Um, the next year I did go to Geelong and I played, uh, played 18 games in my first year at Geelong and then um, had one of the few injuries I ever had in, in, in football and that was, I, I did my Achilles in the week before the first game of my second year at Geelong, which was 1975. And it meant that I'd play a few games, miss a few games, play a few games, miss a few games. But what it meant was that I was able to qualify to play in the reserves finals. And in that year, 1975, we were lucky enough to win the uh, VFL reserves grand final. Same year that uh, the Geelong West boys um, won the VFA first division grand final. And from there, I still had the injuries. I put up with the injuries for, for another 12 months and then eventually I decided I was going to quit football. And um, a friend of mine from Torquay came and said, look, you know, if you come and play with Torquay, you don't have to train, you don't have to do it much. So I thought, oh, yeah, OK. So I went and played with Torquay and I, I went there as a captain and coach. And uh, in 1976, we, we made the grand final after losing the first eight games of the year. We scraped through the finals, kicked 20 goals in the grand final to be beaten by two goals by Drysdale. Um, after that, I decided I, I would give footy away. I was a bit sick of it and I was sick of being injured. I was sick of hobbling around and, and I gave it away and I went overseas for 12 months and then came back uh, at the beginning of 1980, uh, Grovedale Football Club approached me and asked me to take on a playing coach role there, which I did for that year, uh, 1980, and uh, we managed to make preliminary final that year. We just couldn't get, uh, get to the grand final. I don't think it was helped by the fact that I got suspended in the last home and away game for punching a bloke who uh, gave me a squirrel grip and I went to the tribunal and said, well, anybody gives me a squirrel grip again, I'll do the same thing. And they said, well, we've got to rub you out. So they rubbed me out and we missed the, the grand final. Um, and then I, I was going to give it away completely and that was the end of that. And then uh, 1981, uh, Albert Batty rang me up from Geelong West Footy Club. Um, a coach and a number of players had just resigned and left the club and the club was, was sinking and it was probably the beginning of the end for the VFA really because it wasn't very long after that that the VFA was swallowed up by the AFL when the AFL went national. But um, we came back, I came back here and, and coached for that one year in 1981 as a non-playing coach. And I remember, in fact, Mark and I were talking about this um, when we were driving over here this afternoon. The first game I coached here in 1981, we went to Sandringham and we got beaten by 180 points. And I remember going into the, um, into the rooms after the game and I said to the players, I said, all right, well, look, we're obviously not going to make finals. But if we stick together and we work hard, we're going to play this mob again on our own dunghill in 10 or 12 weeks' time. And our aim from here is to beat them when we play them the next time. And, you know, we did. We beat them by four goals. We've, we fronted up down here against them. 
and we beat them by four goals. And it's one of the proudest moments I've had in football was, uh, was beating Sandringham that day. And it, it, it still makes me really emotional about that. That, you know, the whole club stuck together. We, we patched things up. We got a couple of players back. Um, we, we really, we just stuck fat, as they say, and, and we won that game. Uh, I don't remember any of the other games for that year, to be honest. Um, I remember a lot of wet training sessions and so on, but, you know, that's footy. Um, um, and then after that, that was, that was the end for me. I, I decided that I had other things in life that I wanted to do. I was a school teacher. I eventually I moved to the Northern Territory as a teacher and finished my teaching career there. I was there for 25 years. Uh, and, and that was that was it. That was my football career. Uh, my football career started uh, here at West in 1970 as a 16 year old. Uh, it sort of mirrored very much what Ricky has just mentioned. Um, the only reason I was here in 1970 was that the only way mum and dad could watch us both play in the Bendigo League was if I uh, left Barwon, I was playing for Barwon and I went up and played in the Bendigo League in the under 18s and mum and dad could watch us both play on the same day. Um, so we trained at West and uh, under Ian Bryant and then I followed Ricky the next year. The two of us came here in 1971 and uh, we were in first division and uh, I was a 17 year old playing and it was very, very hard. I can remember playing on um, oh, a couple of really old seasons, uh, former VFL players, and they, uh, Mick Irwin was one, and he, he just punched the living daylights out of you. And uh, as a 17 year old, you, you learn a heck of a lot. And then in 1972, we had the uh, championship team, which was fantastic. Um, and I'd like to reiterate about Billy Goggin has been the best coach and football person that I've ever spoken to. He, uh, as Rick said, he was very tough. I can remember him singling me out on a few occasions and giving me what for. But, uh, and I can remember running many, many laps around Indian file and in the wet and, uh, but it was all for the best. Uh, then in 1973, the same thing happened. Uh, when Rick was asked to go down to Geelong, I was asked to go down. I was told that if you want to come down, this was halfway through the season, if you want to come down, you pick to play against Carlton in the senior side on Saturday. Now, was a 17 or 18 year old, you think, Ugh, yeah, that sounds good. But uh, our family's always, been you stick with the people who've given you a go so uh, I stayed here and we saw the season out and then in 1974 uh, Rick, Rex Deeth and myself went down to Geelong and Geelong uh, delisted some players and a lot of those great players came over and were all part of the 1975 Premiership team here at West uh, and I played at Geelong from 74 till 1978, five seasons. And then in 1979, I'd had enough of, of uh, football down at Geelong and they'd had enough of me. And uh, I uh, came back to West and it was part of that infamous 1979 grand final that we just went down by a kick or so to uh, Coburg. And then um, after that, 1980, I stayed, 81, 82, 83, and then eventually I had a couple of knee injuries and uh, I ended up leaving in about 1984, I think it was. So, yeah. So basically, that's my career at West. Uh, well, I was, I was a centre player, basically. Um, I played in the centre most of my football career. Um, you'd call it an on-baller these days. Um, 
I came, I played as a centre player for uh, Golden Square in Bendigo. Uh, I was lucky enough to win two best and fairest there in the three years that I played there. Then I came to Geelong West, uh, played in the centre here. I uh, loved it at Geelong West, I loved the VFA. The, the best years of my football career were played here. Um, a, because of the club itself and, and the way you were made to feel welcome, and as I said about the mateship, but also the fact that we played 16 man aside teams and the game was so open and as a centre player, you just, you just had all the room to move around in and if you, if you were prepared to run, um, you, you could play well in the VFA and that was, uh, then I went to, I was recruited as I said before, I was recruited by Geelong to, as a centre player and um, I went to Geelong and of course they already had a pretty uh, accomplished centre player so I finished up playing on a half forward flank and I didn't really enjoy it, I didn't really enjoy my time at, at Geelong, I never really felt welcome there. Um, but that, you know, that was, that's the way it goes. But yeah, I was, I was a centre player. I was a, what you would call an on-baller. Uh, I started my uh, playing as a half-forward flanker. Uh, I was a true half-forward flanker because I could always run three yards faster on the forward line than I could ever on the back line, which is a, a sign of a good half-forward flanker. Um, I used to like trying to kick goals, I used to love kicking a goal and, uh, and then eventually I became a, a sort of a midfielder ruck rover and, and played uh, quite a bit uh, as a ruck rover but basically as a half forward and a ruck rover although there were the odd occasions Billy used to always have his little uh, funny things that he'd do and quite often I'd play at centre half back and uh, unfortunately I was always playing on guys who were about a foot taller and uh, I, I think one, one of my uh, worst moments was, it was in that Coburg Grand Final when I was playing centre half back on a big tall fella and I'd done really well all bar for about a ten minute period and he kicked the one or two goals and I always sort of feel as if I'd let the, the team down a little bit in that particular 10 minute period but but they were my positions. Oh, the Geelong West Football Club, um, as I've said I played here in probably what was my prime as a, as a young man. Um, they were my prime football years, they were prime years in my life from you know from 20 to 23. Um, I, I made lifelong friends there that, that I still see, as you do in any football club. But as, I think probably just the fact that um, we, we stuck together, we were all good mates. We used to play cards on a Thursday night after training. We'd, you know, we'd, we'd come into the, to the club rooms after games and, um, yeah, it, it was, it was just a time in my life that was the most enjoyable and certainly as far as football goes, you know, as I said, you know, when I left here, went to, to play at Geelong, it always felt like, um, I, I never really felt welcome there, I always felt like somebody was trying to take my position, um, whereas here at Geelong West, uh, I always felt comfortable, I always felt I was amongst friends um, and I always will. Uh, Geelong West means to me, uh, it, it was, it's been my best football home. I've had two or three different football homes. Uh, I loved it here. I loved the Oval. I used to love coming to training. Uh, I loved Billy as a coach. I used to, when I was playing at Geelong, and Billy was coaching Footscray, if I was playing bad, I'd go out and I'd ask Billy for advice and he was coaching an opposition team and he would always give me sensible advice and tell me perhaps what I should do and uh, I always uh, thank him for that and love him for that. And all the players, I've played with plenty of great players, you know, great 
great backs, great forwards. Uh, Tony Gilmore was just was just a sensational player. How he never played more games at VFL level has got me beaten over the time. Um, backs were Howard Smith, uh, Jan Smith, and Tony in the centre. Uh, Ricky was a, a great player, and then you had. Joe Radojevic and Graham McLean up, up forward, they were just sensational players. So it, it just, uh, I don't come back a much to the, to the club as I perhaps should these days, but um, it is uh, certainly in a, a huge place in my heart. So I'll always love my time at the Geelong West Football Club. Once I got married, we, my wife and I, Chris, had uh, two lovely young daughters and um, you know, so we didn't have the boy that we could follow in, in the football. So, and both my girls have played netball growing up and basketball, and they've uh, done fairly well with their netball in that uh, Madison, the eldest one, has played for Australia and won a Commonwealth gold medal in the uh, Australian netball team. And the uh, Vixen, she's played with the Vixens for a number of years, and our youngest daughter, Kelsey, is also playing for the Vixens now. But um, so we're very proud of them and uh, we uh, are just uh, so thankful that uh, they can do what they love us, just like we were able to do. I've got one son, uh, Nelson. Um, I was a bit of a late starter. I was 44 when Nelson was born. Uh, we lived in the Northern Territory for 25 years. He was born there. Uh, he lived in a, an Aboriginal community, no junior footy. Um, by the time he came down here as an 18 year old, um, he, he used to kick the footy with me in the backyard, but that was it. Uh, then he went to Torquay, um, because we knew a couple of people down there, he knew a couple of young blokes down there, and uh, he played there for a couple of years, and then um, David Wojcicki spotted him and invited him to come in and play at, uh, at Newtown and Chilwell and he's now in his second year at Newtown Chilwell, having played last year, his first year, um, played in the whole finals, including the grand finals, uh, and he's doing very well, and I'm very proud of him. Couldn't be any more proud of him than, than Mark is of his girls. And, you know, we're, we're, we're a close family. <coughs> uh, Nelson and the two girls are very close. We go and watch the netball, they come and watch Nelson play footy, so, you know, we're, we're pretty happy fam sporting family, really. You've given your heart to get here And your soul to get it right You can take them boots and all um, But it's sure gonna take a fight When you spend all week getting to your peak You're gonna have your say you bet. On Sunday, it's the BFA. It's Sunday, you're gonna make your play for the BFA. Today, you're gonna fly. It's Sunday for the BFA. It's Sunday.